Well, I, I hope our that. recording starts now. Yeah. Now I, I tell you what, you 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 will know this, this thing. How do you attract attention in a meeting? Do you th there's a hand somewhere that you can wave? You know, uh, I think probably the best way would be you know that that we always would have like a co-host who would be watching this kind of thing. Yes. Because, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a scattered brain, you know, I'm, I'm watching the screen and, and there's a way to, to see these things, okay? Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not really good at it. I, I just no, but, keep forgetting but, about it. But on, on the bottom of your screen, yeah. there, should, there should be a thing called reactions. Yeah, there is. Hello. Um, and on there, that there is, you've got clap, yeah, um, thumbs up, heart, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, boy, so what mouth. do we do? If, what happens if, if I clap? Nothing. Um, well, well, no. All that happens is that you, your your hand goes up. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Top. How do I get it off? You click again, I think. But yeah. but but there's also a, a raised hand mm -hmm. thing. Which I got. Which, which means <laughs> you, you, you watch, you've got your hand up to say something. Yeah. Okay. And it should show up on the pictures, you know, on, on the people's pictures. Is Judy coming in? Judy is, Judy is hiding. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> She's somewhere there. Can you hear me? You can't hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Can you see? Me? Don't, don't see you, but hear you. I can't see you. I don't know. Let me see. I should be good at this thing. Let's see here. Uh, none of us is good at this thing, you know, except, you know, like the 18 years old, you know, and the, uh, you know, anyone from 10 to 18 or 25, something like that. Say even younger, yes. It's, it's, it's rather um, galling when that sort of thing happens and you, and they, they, they're so clever and quick at it as well, aren't they? Oh, God, yes. You know, I mean, if you see kids, you know, uh, texting on their uh, uh, on, on their phone with one hand, you know, and they, they text, you know, three times faster than I text on, you know, I, I write in, in, on, on the keyboard. I know, I know. It's, I, it, 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 it's absolutely shocking, you know. So. Yeah. And they're texting while they are driving, you know. <laughs> uh, well, that's, yes, there's a lot of controversy about that. In yeah. This country, about that. No. Yeah. So, anyway, um, you saw your uh, uh, slideshow now on the on the. Yes, thank on, you very much, Steve. Yeah, it, 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 it works now. So, yep. at least we know what works and what doesn't work. You know? Yeah. So, um, MP4 for for the future. Yeah, I'm currently working on a on a on another AV about. Um, do you have Do you have Skylarks in America? Yeah. yeah. Do I have what? Skylark. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Do, Hi, um. do we have what? Uh, yeah. The it's the it's the skylark. The the lark lark. It, it's a small bird, a meadow bird. And uh, uh, anyway, I'm, 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 I'm sure that we do. I'm I'm just terrible with the birds. You know, I can recognize her herons or 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 owls or eagles. The smaller birds, you know, I don't know what they are, you know, so they are, they're too fast for me, you know. Oh, the swallows I can recognize because there's zillions of them. Yeah. But, oh, you can't see me? No, no you, are, you are in the dark. Turn on the lights, Judy. <laughs> I have them on. Oh, you should see me. I turned on the lights today. Can't you ask? Isn't there a place you ask, ask me? Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see your hand raised, Judy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, hi, Mickey. Yes, it's nearly the end of the day. Uh, I have a slight video. You got it. Hold on. Yeah. I yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. This is great. Nancy, I'm in the light, you see? You know, you are the most popular one over here. There are like 
five admirers of his. The rest of us all men, you know, that you had all the lady in the group. Oh, how did that little thing go? That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, anyway, um, we had our first camera club meeting, a regular meeting on last Tuesday, which uh, didn't really go all that well because the meeting was supposed to be showing the slide shows, a lot of slide shows from the members, what we have done during the summer time. Hey, I did and, my yeah, but the but Zoom is not very good for that. You know, it didn't work all that well. But what I have done is in, in the chat section, I put in the link, you know, uh, to the same slide shows that I put it on, on, on the camera <clears throat> website. And they are not going to go through Zoom. You know, you can just either click on that link at one time or you can just save that link. And, uh, you know, then uh, you can see all those slides. So, uh, and uh, David has got three of them. Ian has got one. I got one. Uh, one of our guys, Bert, has got one, you know, so. Um, pretty good, actually. What's on that? There's some lovely work there. Yeah. Some, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't do all that many of them anymore, you know. Just, uh, I, I have my background as one of your pictures. The what? One of your pictures is my background. Uh, well, a, 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 a screenshot. Uh, yeah, Let's see if I can raise my hand. How do you raise your hand? Um, I just told me on the lower um, part of your screen there is a little thing it's set called reaction. And okay. it's right and next to hand. What, that that and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there you are. You raise your hand. Okay. What, what does it show? Does it show me raising my hand? But I can't. But I, I can't find anything to, which says raise your hand. It's I've got clap, thumbs up, heart, joy. Because maybe, because maybe. Click, you have to click on your name. You have to click yeah. on your name. Oh. Lower. Okay. No, no, just you are just waiting for David. Oh, David is here. Okay. Oh, is Mickey there? Is Mickey there? Hi, hi, John. How are you? Mickey is there. Can you see yourself, did they? Uh, Hello. So, so, been better, been worse. Good. Hi, 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 John. Hello. Hi, 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 It's down by my feet, that's why. <laughs> and you put a sock on it, I know. Yes. <laughs> Jane said she's not going to join us today. So I think you can, you know, anytime we can get started, if someone has got some great ideas. I can't. Not that I just, I just want to show you a laughing horse that I took the picture of it today, you know, just for one second, okay? And then David can take back the screen. Okay. Look at that. Isn't oh, that smashing. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love the expression. Yeah. God, beautiful. Yeah. Love the, the lighting from, you know, just in front of it as yeah, well. It, yeah, it came from the, from the back and the side, you know. So yeah. yeah. It was really perfect. All I right. bet it's Heidi is, Heidi is coming up. Hi, Heidi. Can you hear Not us? Try again. No, oh, she must be here. Hi. Hi. Yeah, that's good. All right. We got what? No, no, Karen. In the case, coming. 
I was just ready. telling to everyone, David, that I put the link to the slideshows from the Husatonic Camera Club on right over here in the chat section. So in case uh, yes. people are interested in, and this is to the one, you know, which is working, you know, not, not, not the one that we actually had on the thing. It's, I don't think that you can actually uh, play video through Zoom. You know, I, I really don't think so. No. no, I don't think the refresh rate keeps up with yeah, it. it. It doesn't, there's no, no way to do it. So, well, let's see, if, yeah, it is coming up. All right. So, Judy, colder, colder days are coming. We had a really deep frost, you know, really freezing, freezing, freezing frost for three nights in a row now, okay? Wow. When I went out, it was 25 degrees. Wow. Yeah, so get ready. Good gosh. Look at the Yeah. Hey, Liz. Hey, Judy. Hey. David. Who is David? Where is David there? Yeah. No, hey. not David. That, that's Mickey down there. He's <laughs> one, two, three. He's over here. Else down. Oh, there's John. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, no, he's <laughs> as well. Hi. Hi. Heidi's disappeared. Hey. Hey, hey you guys. I almost see you in like a... Hi. Yeah. Well, that's a ceiling. Very nice ceiling. Oh, there's a new nickname. David. Uh, I have two entrants. Uh, one with video on my tablet and one um, on my computer because the screen is bigger. Okay. You've got a nice echo there as well. We can mm. see you. We can see you in stereo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I Someone has I got this weird sound done. I have <laughs> muted one. Yeah. Because that's okay. <laughs> oh, nice, nice sound effects. I must be honest. I like that. <laughs> All right. I, I'll be quiet. Right. Judy, you were going to say something? Yes. Yes. Oh, do I want to say something? No, I thought you were going to say something. Yes. Could you do something? Could you, could you have everybody tell me? I'm on the phone, so could everybody just tell me who they are? Can I just see a picture of everybody who's there? You should. I'm can yeah. they can they just say hello so I can see their picture? Yeah. You you never met me, Judy, but uh, I'm Laszlo. Okay. Why don't you see your picture, Laszlo? Okay, you don't see. I, me? I recommend blocking that one, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the upper part, I don't know how how your thing is is, is set up. You know, uh, there are those thumbnails oh. of the video feed. Okay, I see you. You're in green. Okay, who's next? I see you, Lando. Okay, good, good. Very important. You're just as handsome as ever. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. You made me blush. Okay. So, <laughs> next, next one. So who's next? Who's next? Karen from David's group. I've always admired your painting. You're amazing. I don't, thank you, but I don't see you yet. Hold on. <sighs> Karen. You're supposed to be outlining. I thought when you spoke, it showed your whole picture, but I don't see you. Yeah. Should do. If, if someone speaks, you know that, that that picture should be coming up. Yeah, it should be. So speak again, Carol. Was it Carol? Karen. Karen. Karen, you're from where? Tell New me. Jersey. That. Yeah, you're the Jersey girl. <laughs> So where are you? I don't see you. You're not out on the green. I'm above Laszlo. <laughs> see that again? It's thing. Mike. Okay. <laughs> There's an Enika, 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 Enika. No. Yeah, no. uh, no. and, uh, and me. 
I haven't seen you in ages, Mickey. Um, who else is there? We've got John. John, I don't know John. Who's John? Say hello, John. Uh, where is John from? Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah, and that's Mickey, who's also from Glasgow. Yes. And then we got Ian. Hello. Say hello, Ian. Who wants to be in Glasgow? I know him. Yes, I saw him. He's very good, isn't he? Okay. Hey, David, you got. I'm the only one who did your homework. Do you know that? <laughs> did you? Oh, oh I, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes. I said yeah. you. <coughs> that was really good, too. Yeah, you did a good job. You no, did I didn't. Do it. You, you did the homework. I didn't do it. <laughs> it made it easy, though. You made it easy. Yeah, on the, the, the shack with the car in front, truck in front. Yeah. Yeah. What Judy, it, it, no, it, it, you know, last week when we did that painterly effect on the end. Oh, okay. okay. Jo, uh, Judy did a, a picture of, I don't know if you got it handy there, Judy. Her painting is amazing. She's good yeah. with the paintbrush. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I can, I can give, you, give you the screen, David. Right, okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You'll see more as they pop up, Judy. Oh, hang on. Ian, you have a different background. Yes, I have. Yeah, I'm in Scotland today. <laughs> this is the Glenfinnan Monument, just just west of Fort William. That's, that's great and beautiful scenery. Is that on your wall? I'm sorry, is it on my wall? On your wall? I didn't. All right. Oh, no. look at that. We think alike today, David, huh? It's not. <laughs> I thought that's what you're playing. <laughs> two, two of a kind. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it, to, this, I, Mickey asked the asked question uh, that you sent to me sometime last week it was about sharpening different methods of sharpening and removing and it was halos as well wasn't it mickey i think that's right that. yes yeah it's th there's quite a few different methods of sharpening and one of the ones let's just have a quick look at this the, the image i've got here is what I'd call my, my full size image and it's, it's the, the master copy. In other words, it's got everything that made this particular picture up, which started off like that. And I've just darkened down the background and emphasized our pony. But with sharpening, I never finish, or should I say, I never sharpened. This was a raw file. It hasn't been sharpened at all. And what I tend to do is sharpen it at whatever size you want rather than sharpening it this size which is if we go up to image and down to uh, where we're going to go image size and it's going to show me it is there it is four sorry six thousand pixels by four thousand pixels so it's 20 inches by 13.333 and it's 300 for the the resolution so that's the size of the image but i i never sharpen it at sharpen it this size the reason being that if you sharpen it full size and you then reduce it down in size that sharpening tends to overdo itself and that's where sometimes you can get that halo in effect also creeping oh, thank in. You. thank you what i prefer to do is sharpen it at the finished image size so with this particular one i'd come up to image and i'd come down to i was going to say hold it mickey i haven't finished yet <laughs> duplicate it so I went to image and down to duplicate. And I'm going to duplicate merge layers only. In other words, we're going to take these layers here and by merge layers only, we now come down to one single and there it is one single layer. If you go to image and back down to image size, that's what we had before, 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. It's 68.7 megabytes in size. So that's the file size of the image. So it depends what you want to do with it. You know, if you want to 
how do you usually do your images, Mickey? Are they for printing or? So they're, they're printing for the club competitions and exhibition. So what sort of size do you do? A3. A3, which is roughly? No, roughly 20 by 15, 16 by 20. 20 by 16, roughly. Yeah, so this would come in at 20 inches. There it is by 13. So this would roughly be um, for, the, for the size there of your A3. So what I'd do next, and, and this is where the, the methods creep in, that a couple of different methods. First of all, if I use Command J, Control J, so we've now duplicated the layer. Let's see if I can just move you into there. That's better. I can see what I'm doing now. And with this, I always like, particularly in Photoshop, just to bring my cursor over where it says layer one. If you right click, you can go down to convert for smart object. I like using this because now we can file mm -hmm. and we can come down to other and we're going to go to high pass. And with high pass, there it is. You can see it's just faintly in the distance. If I use command one, control one, we can go to 100% of the image. So there's our pony's eye. If I just move this around into this area, there's an eye somewhere. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, well, it's there somewhere, but you can use this just to zoom out 50%. Oh, there found it. There's his eye, and you can see it's just a faint outline. By taking this radius up to that sort of position there, round about two, I don't want to overdo it with this, but round about two looks pretty good. So that's the radius of two pixels. We're going to click OK. One thing to notice. When you look at it, you can see around this region here. And if I just press H to give me the handle, coming down here as well, you can see the brown coming through for the, from the pony's uh, fur. So I'm going to come to, I can never remember where it is. I'm going to use Command and U or Control and U. So that's Command U or Control U. That's going to bring up the hue saturation. And I'm going to drop that right down to minus 100. We're going to click on OK. So we've taken the color element out. So now it's only this gray area. To get the sharpening effect, changing it from normal, we can come down to overlay. So there it is. If I switch it off and on, you can see the difference that's making. I'm going to zoom out using Command 0, Control 0, and just taking a look. I think I want it a little bit more. So I'm going to double click where it says High Pass. This is the beauty of using smart objects, it allows you to pop out. I'm just going to take this up a touch more. Let's go to that area there. Let's go to 3.5, really overdone it now. And if I just switch it off and on, you can see the difference that's making, particularly around this region here. Always go into 100%. If you look at it, you can see there's the difference. And then drop the opacity down to blend it in just a touch or two. Does anybody use high pass? I use it sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. No, it's, it's new to me. I can't say I'm a fan of it. The reason why I'm not a fan of it on some images, you'll notice, particularly in areas like this, it, you get a little bit of noise creeping in. It tends to emphasize any blemishes, any noise in the image. Here's, it's not showing it too badly uh, if I just wait for things to kick into place, thank you. I can't see much noise with this. There's, there is noise around there, which is creeping in, but always go into 100%, then reduce it down. I've taken it down to 57. And if I just switch that off and on, you can see the difference that makes. Just gonna use Command Zero, Control Zero to go to fit on screen. Let's switch this one off. Let's fold it up out of the way. Any questions at all on? You could localize, David, you could localize the area you're actually sharpening with uh, a layer mask, couldn't you? That sounds like Michael. It is. Hello, Michael. Sorry, I didn't, I've, I've, I've minimized everybody because I was getting, it was creeping in on the, the side there, so I can't see anybody. Yep, basically what you can do with this, thank you for that, Michael, is if you click on it, switch it on, what you can do is you can add a layer mask so you can click on this icon here. There's our layer mask. If I press B on the keyboard, I've now got the brush tool. I've got black as my foreground color. 
Opacity 20%, that's too low. So let's press zero to take me to 100%. I'm going to use the right hand square bracket to make my brush bigger. And what you can do is you can paint over like this just to remove it. So if there was noise in this region, we have now removed it. The same with this, you don't want that to be sharp. If you want to see where you're actually painting, press the backward slash key. So now you can see I missed a bit here. So I can just go down there. I can just paint around here. I don't want this area to be sharp either. So I'm gonna come and just paint in that sort of area like that. Pressing the backward slash key again. So now we've just framed our pony's head. And yeah, that looks my, that's my, get my words right, looks much better. So thank you for that, that's uh, prompted me on that one. Yes, normally I would put a mask in so we can see exactly where we've, uh, or should, should I say, remove the area where you don't want it to be sharp. Plus the fact you can, you can also reduce that noise, which would have been in this area here and around this area in particular. Any questions at all so far? The next method, Command J, Control J, duplicate the layer again. Once again, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna come down to Smart Object. And when the Smart Object opens, if we come up to Filter, this is probably my favorite, Sharpen. If we come down to, now you've got a choice of two. You've got Unsharp Mask, which is the older version. You've got the newer version, which is the Smart Sharpen. I like using this. So when we click on it, you get a much bigger dialog box. So you can see the pony's eye quite quickly. I'm going to use command one, control one again. No, I can't. So I use space bar. Well, yes, I can to 100%. So we can see exactly how it's going to look. And with this, if I just come up where it says cancel, I'm just going to press alt or option, click on reset, make sure I've got that. In fact, I'm going to click and go to defaults. So that's the, the default setting with it. The amount 200, radius one pixel. This is basically, if you can imagine one little pixel, we're now looking at one pixel around that. The reason why I say this is we're not sharpening the image with both methods we just used with that unsharp mask and with this one. All we're doing is we're adjusting the contrast between the light and the dark area. You cannot sharpen an image. So uh, yeah, it's the contrast that we're adjusting. If I come down a little bit further, and it says remove. With this, you've got Gaussian blue. These are the algorithms, uh, the Gaussian blue, uh, blue, the Gaussian blue. The Gaussian blue was the one that they used in the unsharp mask. The lens blur, this is gonna be far more accurate. Motion blur, I've always wondered about this one. Now, if you've got motion in your sort of, you know, camera shake, that sort of thing, how are you supposed to know what angle your sort of camera shake was from? And that's always puzzled me with this particular one. But I'm going to change that back to lens blur. Let's fold this out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to take this up just a little bit higher. Let's go for one point. Let's go for two pixels. And if I click down, you can see the before and the after with it. Let's take the percentage up as well. Let's take it right up like this. And just clicking down just a little bit higher like that, I want this to stand out further. With the preview, you can switch it off and on and just see the difference that makes. You see there it is, the before and the after, particularly on the eyelash there. Quite like that. When I said about the noise, and I said about removing it, with the shadow, you could come to shadows and you can move that across as well. So you can actually remove the sharpening effect from this area here by just bringing this in. It's not showing particularly well with this, but there, that region there, I've just noticed the way it just dimmed down slightly. That looks pretty good. You can also remove the sharpening effect from the highlights by using the sliders down the bottom. So once you've done that, you can click on OK and out it pops, just waiting for it to render itself any time now would be good. And thank you. And there it is. You can see that the sharpening effect around, particularly on this part of our horse's head. 
and as I say, always go to 100% because that way you can now look at it and you can just drop down the sharpening until it blends into the image. You don't want it to be over the top. So just taking it down, I've gone down to 78. So that looks better like that. Command zero, control zero to go up to fit on screen. We've also got a mask with the smart filter there that we put in. So I can press B on the keyboard again, should I want to, if I press B, I've got to make sure you click on the mask. The framework, that's the reason for deliberately making that mistake. The framework is around the thumbnail here. What you need to do is press the, the mask. So the thumbnail has now got this, or has gone from the thumbnail, should I say, get my words right in a minute, to the mask. And you can see there it is, that framework going around. There's my brush, black is the foreground color. As we did before, I can just start to remove that area around here just to take that out and doing exactly the same with this. Just taking it out, release it every so often. You can see on the mask itself, little white bits that I've missed, but if I just come over there and there it is, just as we did, same before, just notice the part I missed out on and over it again. And there it is. So that's the other method that you can use. Sorry, Indica. I like this method better. I much prefer using this method. I must be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the, the high pass filter. But when Mickey asked the question, it made me think of uh, something else. Just let me change images. Let's come over to this one here. It's a bit of a busy image. Um, but the reason for using this image is once again, if you come to image and if you come down to, let's go down to where it says duplicate. There it is. So we're going to duplicate it. Tick merge layers only, which is this one. And we're just going to duplicate it. This time I'm going to come to image, image size. I'm going to drop the size down. This was 15.733. Uh, Let's take it down to 10. Mm -hmm. So it's 10 by 7 inches, 300 resolution. We're going to click OK to that. Command 0, Control 0 to go to fit on screen. When Mickey asked the question, I tried that. And even though I don't use it, in when I sort of process in a raw file, it's one that I quite like the effect that it gives. So I started to wonder if we could use it now. So why not use Command J, Control J to duplicate the layer, right click once again and go into a smart object. So there it is a smart object. What we're going to do is go to filter, stay, we're going to come down to camera raw filter. So going back into camera raw, we can have a look around, that looks pretty good. We can go to the sharpening. And if I just right click, we're gonna to go to 100%. So we're zooming in to this region here. I'm gonna press H on the keyboard, which is now giving me the hand tool so we can move ourselves around. Looking at the sharpening here, the amount, if you move this across like this, you can see the way it sort of takes the sharpening effect up. But the best way of doing it is if you press Alt or Option, it now changes the image to black and white. The beauty of this is without colour in the image, it's far easier to see what you're actually having the effect with with the sharpening. I'm going to take it up. I'm looking at this area here where it says Lively Lady in particular. Let's move that around a little bit more. I'm just taking it up into this region. Radius one pixel. Once again, press Alt or Option. And with Alt or Option, you can see the edges there. That's what we're going to be sharpening. You can reduce it down a touch or two. Let's take it up. I'm going to deliberately overdo this. Let's take it up to 1.6. There will do nicely. Detail, clicking down and just moving it. Once again, you've got those gray outlines. Just looking where you've got the white areas, that's where we're going to be sharpening. This is the bit that I really like. If you press and hold down Alt or Option, now with the mask, it turns white. We can now move this in. And what it's going to do is where you've got the black, there is going to be no sharpening effect at all. Where you've got the white, that's where it's going to be sharpening. So you can take it right up. If we use this on that horse, you can just fine tune it. So you just get the horse's, uh, the eye, the mane, uh, 
and the, the fur flying out around it, the rest of it then would be sort of in the black area and you wouldn't be sharpening it so you don't have to mask it. So pressing alter option, moving it into this region here will do nicely. You can also look around as well and see if there's any noise in the picture. There isn't with this, but if there were some noise, you could come to luminance and you could just bump that up a little bit, perhaps taking it to this region here and perhaps just a little bit of color noise. And there it is. Looking at the image, if I just come down to this little Y symbol, if you click on it, you can see the before and the after. And if you look around this area here, you can see that's much crisper than this side. Just moving it over again and looking at the writing there, you can see that text is better there, as is the net. Let's just click again. We've now got the before, which is this side, the after that side. So one thing that annoys me with this, you've got to go through this, the whole cycle before you get back to normal. Command zero, control zero, go back to fit on screen and we can click on OK. Just waiting for it to go back, render, there it is in the image. And if I just switch this off and on, you can see the difference that's made. Once again, go to 100%. It hasn't yeah, I didn't sharpen it as much as I wanted to because I wanted to get some lineage coming down here, which I thought I'd show Mickey the, uh, the halo in effect. But if you switch it off and on, you can see the difference that makes with the sharpening. That does a really good job. Plus, you got the benefit that you can just double click. You can go back in, go back. There's the settings that we put in, sharpening amount. I thought we he used was, more than that. Ian is raising his hand. David. So, Ian, yes. May I ask you a question, please? Um, what, is May. The, what is the advantage of um, a system like you've been describing compared to things like Topaz Sharpen, etc.? Because um, Topaz is a very good sales system, and I'm wondering whether I'm wasting my time with that and should be trying to concentrate on what you're <laughs> it, Ian, it's it's a minefield out there, quite literally. Oh. Yes, there's Topaz. Yes, there's uh, Nick. Yes, there's uh, you name it. There are programs out there which are going to sharpen your image absolutely, totally, amazingly and do all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Topaz... Uh, Topaz were... But I, that was the wrong word. It's not word, but Topaz are very good at reinventing themselves. They did a whole suite of various softwares going back a couple of years ago, and it was, it, everything was fantastic. They did brilliant ones for giving sort of arty effects to pictures. I don't know if anybody remembers those, but there was some really terrific software. Then they've changed it, and they seem to have reinvented themselves again, and it, it's now a whole new system for the sharpening, there's one, is there one called Gigapixels, isn't there? And there's one called, uh, I can't remember all the other, but there's there's loads of different ones. Studio, Topaz, Glow, Topaz, Clarify, Topaz. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the latest versions tend to be called AI, which is artificial intelligence. So whether, whether it's them doing it or someone else, a, a machine doing it instead, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's going down the AI route. Luminar is another one, which are now, because they had Luminar, uh, and I think it was up to 3.4. <clears throat> There's now a new version coming out again, which is Luminar AI, and everybody's going down. Luminar had a fantastic section on of, of AI, should I say, sliders within their basic Luminar package, but now they're going even further down the AI route. Uh, I don't know, it's, I quite like doing it still in Photoshop. I must be honest, as far as noise reduction, I love using the uh, Nick Define, I think. Yeah, Nick Define, that does a brilliant job. But as far as sharpening, I always use Photoshop. Okay, right, thank you. It's, it, yeah, it's, if you've got it, use it. You know, I think the flexibility that Photoshop gives is quite amazing. I love it with this, the fact that you can actually select the areas. So everything that's white, that's going to be sharpened. Everything is black is not going to be sharpened. And I, I like that effect 
yeah. that we can do with it. So that's, like a, a, that's like a luminosity mask, David? It is basically like a luminosity mask. Um, <clears throat> let's just whack this right up. Talking of luminosity masks, let's whack that right up as well. And let's see if that will make the... Doesn't seem to want to play. <laughs> we got a little bit. If I just use command one control, oh, we are in at 100%. All right, let's zoom in closer to this region here. That is the fringe. Is this what you're referring to, Mickey? Yes. Right. How well, to it's remove. It's been over sharpened. Sorry? Well, if you over sharpen it, you get yeah. a fringing effect down there. That, that's the key, though, is basically not to over sharpen and what I mean by that is when you sharpen it always if you if you do different sharpening for different sizes so for if you're doing it for a3 then if you're doing it for your digital projection so if you had a3 which is 20 odd inches uh, and your digital projection which is going to be 1400 pixels or 1050 on the long side there's a huge difference in the file size. So if you sharpen it for the one size, then reduce it down, you are going to get this sort of effect. The only way I've found to get rid of this is if you come to channels, come over the RGB. If you haven't got channels open, if you head up to view, sorry, to window, should I say, and come down, there it is at the top channel. Bring your cursor over the RGB, press and hold down command or control, Notice the way you've now got this lineage coming around here. And if I come up on this layer, this is the live layer. If I put in a layer mask, in it goes. Karen mentioned luminosity mask. There is our luminosity mask. But what we need to do is we need to invert it to remove the, uh, that's halo in effect. So that's command I, control I to invert it. Now if I just click back on the eye icon and see if that's worked. It's done a bit of a job. If I just switch it off and on, you can see there it is before. It's removed a touch of it. It hasn't used, removed a huge amount. If I just go to 100%, it's probably enough not so it shows with this <clears> image. <throat> but that's the only way I've found to remove fringing is to create the luminosity mask, invert it so you've got a negative. In other words, it's going to look like this. And that does help to get rid of the fringing that yeah. you'll get. It's objects like this in particular. But the key really, Mickey, is not, should I say, over sharpening is one thing. Remember we over sharpen this. If you go to 100%, which is showing us down in the bottom left-hand corner, if you go to the 100%, look at it like that, then reduce down the opacity. So if you have over sharpened it, just reduce down the opacity on this layer to blend it in and always get right into the image. So always sort of zoom right in close so you can see the whole way around, switch it off and on and just have a look. And if you think, right, that's a bit too much, click on the layer mask icon, pick up your paintbrush, got uh, black as my foreground color. Just going to, whoops, there it is. No wonder I couldn't see it, it's a huge brush. Drop it down in size. David. Please. Yes. Uh, sorry, I can't see. Laszlo. Yeah, Laszlo. I saw that the, the accent might have given me away. But anyway, uh, would that be a possibility to um, to get rid of those halos with uh, um, the, the layer blending, like blend it and then just take out the, uh, the white part? You know, I, I'm just thinking. I don't know if, it, if it's possible or not. So you just... Let's have a look. It, what you're saying is if I... Because I've got this as a smart object, I can't double click on it. But if we come down to... Um, I'm well, not sure I can as a smart... That, huh? You can double... Yeah. So no, you, you can't. If I just... Got it. Double click on the side, that brings it up. What Laszlo's saying is if we look at this layer, just let me come back to this a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to refill this layer with white. And if I double click again, not over the name, 
now if we come to this layer and what Laszlo is saying is if we move the slider in like this yeah that see the way that reduces it down as well but don't forget we're actually doing it to the whole image it might be worth trying it just a little bit now pressing alt or option and if you press alt or option you can split the slider you can take that down and that's just reducing it there that looks pretty good and that's using the blend if part let's have a look around here as well if i just see that if you look at this layer now you can see you've got those two little squares with a dot in the center and then you've got those two circles so if i fold this up out of the way i know i've got a smart object it's showing me we've got one here and with this here this if i double click brings it back and let's just have a look around this region if i move this slider back like this yeah you can see particularly around here fringing coming down quite badly as well as the mask if i press alt or option split the slider when you split the uh, the slider you it's not quite so uh, aggressive as removing it if i take it down into that region there that looks better and if i switch it off mm. and on you can see it just removing it with that once again though what i would do with this is if we just unfold it down we got the mask press b on the keyboard for the brush tool and if you click on the mask so that framework is now around here i would now remove the bits that you don't want to be sharp because you don't want everything in your image to be sharp like i don't want it over here to be sharp so i'd remove the sharpness from these people We've got 100 percent opacity don't want this to be sharp here i don't want over that area to be sharp as well like that and just over that gravel and perhaps not quite so much over these tanks of whatever these tanks are this paraphernalia there you are so i'll just i'll just remove sharpness in some general areas that you don't want it to be sharp so you do, do you know just I, prefer, I always like to do a little bit of selective sharpening and not sharpen every single pixel from corner to corner from edge to edge i have a question yes karen i, I don't have cc does it have something called uh, dynamic contrast no no okay you're 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 thinking of is it on one yeah because that way you can individually sharpen small medium and large you can them. you can if you with, with the likes of luminar you can that has got small medium and large for, uh, for dynamic sharpening and dynamic contrast that has small medium and large right with that no with photoshop you haven't got the dynamic contrast okay with it it's yeah it, it depends I've, I've always with small medium and large i've always found it a little bit sort of trickier to use i prefer to use an overall effect with it but that's just purely my own sort of personal way my favorite way of doing it but you know everybody has their own way which they prefer so with this we've basically looked at you know if you like with this not that one with where's it gone this one we there is the smart sharpen we had the unsharp mask but crucial with all of these always get right into 100 percent of the image so you can see exactly how sharp and you don't want it to be you know that there is probably just as about as far as you want to go but always look as well when you click on it yeah i've taken that down to 59 percent you know if you over sharpen it like this this is when you'll get those halos, Mickey. But make sure, do, do you zoom in to 100% when you're sharpening? No, I should. I don't. No. So that, if you sharp, if, you know, by zooming into 100%, use the hand tool, press H on the keyboard, and move yourself around the image and have a look and just see how the sharpening and the effect that it's having. You can see it there quite clearly. And reduce down the opacity to blend it in and that's with the unsharp mask i'll do exactly the same with the smart sharp and if we click on this one we're down at 78 if i take it back up 
if I switch this off and on, you can see the difference that's making. One further point I didn't mention with the um, this one, the Unsharp Mask, I forgot what it's called then. You've got Overlay, you can also take it down to Soft Lights, you can also come to Hard Lights and you see the difference that's making. So we've gone from this to that, that's quite subtle. Ooh. Then you've got this one, or you've got even more, you can take it up using Linear Lights, which is quite extreme with the sharpening. So you can choose different blend modes to work with as well. But uh, I tend to stick with overlay, but I did forget to point out you can use different blend modes to get your sharpening effect. But that's what I'd say would be the, the crucial part is to go to 100% then to you know, reduce down the opacity so it can fade in. Can you tell it to do just like only to mid lights, highlights or shadows? You can do that with this one if we just unfold it and what you can do with this is you can reduce the sharpening for the shadows or reduce the sharpening in the highlights. Okay. So you, yes, you've got the, that control. So I can take it out of the highlights or I can take it out of the, the, the shadow areas, but just leaving the sharpening then on the main subject. So yes, you can do it that way. Um, so you have got that control with it. Okay. Um, okay, go ahead. What do you call, please, the um, the second method that you prefer um, of of sharpening, the one you've just been describing? What's its name? Smart the smart sharpen. Yeah, it's called smart sharpen. It's called smart sharpen. It's found under filter, sharpen, which is quite ironic really and if you come down there it is smart sharpen it's above the unsharp mask this is the one we you know that I, I was going to say I grew up with I suppose I did really uh -huh. but this is the one that was always the one we thought of and you always thought hang on unsharp mask that's a bit of a, a strange name for something that's going to sharpen the image and then when you think of the the logic of it you're not sharpening it it's the adjustment of the contrast between the pixels which is giving the impression that the image is being sharp so unsharp mask is a bit of a, a joke I suppose that they were playing with us but with this if I was using this I would with my own camera you I tend to use one pixel radius and I would use 76 for the amount threshold if you've got it if you look in the window here you can see it's the eye there, if I take the threshold up, it's soft, see the way it's just softened that off. If I just whack it back and forth between these two, it just softens it off. It's just like a feathering effect between this amount and that one, well, 1 1.1 pixel radius that we had. But this is the old one. This uses the algorithm of Gaussian blur with it, but the newer version, I'm gonna click cancel with this one, completely different animal. But no, it's not. It's still a horse. And you're very predictable. We're getting to know you very well. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, you've got the sharpening amount, the amount up there, the radius we had there. But we've got the benefit now of the uh, noise reduction. I'm not going to make any jokes about that. Otherwise, Laz will bring his horse in, who's quite clean and make <laughs> louder noise. And remove lens blur. It was Gaussian blur with the unsharp mask, but we're now using lens blur. And yeah, I, I like it. I love the way that we got this really nice clear dialogue box where you can sort of just move your way around to different parts of the image and see exactly how that sharpening is going to appear. And we switch it off and on. It happens in the main image as well with the preview. So this is my favorite, but it was until that time that I suddenly thought, no, hang on a second, what about, and that final one we did, which was, if I just do it quickly with this one, duplicate the layer, right click, convert to smart object, and if we head up to filter, camera raw filter, and with this heading straight, looking at it, we got some highlights here blown. So I can come to the highlight slider, I can just drop that down. There's a bonus. We can come across to sharpening as ever. Right click. Let's go to 100%. And we pop into the eye, press spacebar. 
you've got the hand tool, moving the amount across, but pressing Alt or Option as you do so with the black and white, because you've taken away the color, you can see it much clearer how we're going to do it. So let's take it to that sort of, let's take it higher. I'm looking in particular around the eyebrow there. I've got the radius on one pixel. Let's have a look at that. If you knock it back to 0 0.5. This looks like, like an iPad. Yeah. It's, it is when you do this, Enoki, yes, it does look very much like high pass. But basically what we're doing is we're seeing the lineage that we're going to reveal. And then we've got the detail. This is the bit which is even more like high pass. Yeah. If I take that up, I'm just going to overdo this slightly. Let's take this to 1.5 like that. Now, if you come down to masking, if I just right click, let's go to fit in view. Now with the mask in, again, pressing Alt or Option, and we got that white to start off with. Now it's looking more like Laszlo, as you can see the steam oh, coming yeah. up. Good. <laughs> we just have to invert it. Yeah, and you, now by bringing the mask in, you can see how we can remove all those bits and pieces, those black areas there. Don't forget where it Good. is black, nothing is happening. Where it is white, that's where the sharpening is going to happen. Gosh. That Super. looks really good like that like that and if you come to luminance if i right click again let's pop in press spacebar and just move around to this area here there is no noise with this i'm pleased to say it's was shot at an iso of 200 but no there's no noise with it but if there was you could just bring the luminance in i'm going to click on okay let's go back and just wait for it and there it is if we just switch it off and on you can see the difference and you notice now the way it's actually darkened down that mane very slightly no it's not a mane is it his nose slightly just to blend that in this is what actually really makes a difference i yeah i've deliberately overdone it because as before don't forget mickey always come up to the opacity and just drop it down so it doesn't you, you want it to look crisp you don't want it to look sharp. So you, you, you just want it a nice crisp look to the image. Yeah, Perhaps Can something we like... Can original image, please? Just, Sorry? Just, just, just click, click at that point of zooming. Then, um, that's that's before. That's before. That's after. And again, the, the important one for me is the eyebrow. If I just switch that off and on, you can see the difference that makes. Bit like an optician, isn't it? Off and on, right? Yes. All that. I've just been for one last week, and I. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to go again. There you are. But that's, as I said, that's become my, and it's once again because I, I started thinking about sharpening, and all of a sudden I thought, well, hang on a second, we can go back into camera or filter. I like. I don't use it when I sharpen. If I were to get a normal raw file and I were to take it into to camera raw, I never ever sharpen it. In fact, in camera, let's just see if I can just quickly find a raw file so I can show you. Um, let's just pick any one. Some of these won't load, which is, let's just, Right. Sorry, my, my computer's taken a, a little while these days. Right, if we head over to the sharpening, sharpen, and with this, if I come up and I click on here, let's just open this up a second. I've deliberately, there, sharpen four. I've switched that off. So I don't have this switched on. I don't use the sharpening output at all. I may look, you know, just in case I look at an image and I think, is it sharp or not? I may just try it, but I don't actually use it. As I said, I don't sharpen a raw file when I take it into Photoshop. If it's a JPEG file, that becomes a slightly different animal because your camera has already sharpened it. Whereas with a raw file, it's completely untouched. So what, uh, what I do with this is I may look here for the sharpening, 
just to see if it is sharp where the areas I want it to be sharp. But if even if I clicked OK done, it would no, it wouldn't apply the sharpening effect in here. It is just for sort of preview only, because I prefer to sharpen at whatever size image I'm producing. So if it's a, as Mickey was saying, it was a twenty inch for the A3 plus. If it's say you know ten by eight, if it's a you know five by seven, or if it's just fourteen hundred on on the long side, I would sharpen it at the individual sizes not at its full size because you get a much more accurate uh, rendition for the sharpening that way. Any other questions? Uh, just did you figure out the way how to do that sharpening I send you the picture on? I mean you said so something that, like that it looks like a 3D image. You remember that? Sorry, like a. It, it was a factory. Uh, no, it wasn't a factory. It was inside of an old. Oh, well, 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 yes, yeah. Yo, oh, no, that's. Yeah, stunning. I've... But why, why did it look like a 3D image to you? I mean, just I'm trying to figure it out. It's because when you, when you look at it, there was depth between the object and the background. Laszlo sent me some superb images uh, taken by, I don't even know who the, the photographer was, I can't remember. Absolutely amazing, taken in old buildings, and uh, there was just other bits and pieces. And because of the way that he, he had used his sharpening, it almost made it look to me as if it was three D. Because you could you could get real depth to the image. Yeah. You had you know definite foreground. You, had, you had, then the background, and it, it looked as if you could actually put your hand into the image. And that's why I wondered if there was some sort of it wasn't just the way he sharpened it, but there was something else going on there as well, you know, in the, yeah. the 3D. It's, it's uh, weird, you know, I mean, I, I I can never figure out how it was done, you know, I just no. I, I tried so many different ways, but it's just, I don't get, don't even get close to it, you know, so. No, no the, the only other way you could do it perhaps would be to use uh, smart, sharpening but just select the various objects to sharpen but even so I, I still i i think it's something more down the 3d route that he's he's used yeah. with that to give it the real depth that those those images had but they, Maybe but they highlight. So, sorry inika Maybe in his highlights the 3d effect no I, I just felt it was done more through a uh, either focus stacking or th there's just something else going on with it. I couldn't just see that the image had been sharpened. Mm. Whatever method you used, whatever yeah. software you'd use, would give you that effect because it was uh, it would it was quite awesome. With this, you know, the pony's nose is a little bit soft, but this would have been hard, and it just goes, you know, you could feel the the sharpening going back. To this area here and if there was something in the background it, it just the head would come out at you almost and there was i think there was one from memory of a, a, a doll wasn't there last though you know was it a doll in a pram or a doll sat in a chair All right i seem to remember yeah and that looked as if it was you know you could see almost like separation from the background did to he the, just the shoot it with the camera or if because he was in a building did he use other lighting like like the background separate from the Subject? Oh uh, no! Let me see if I can find. Who knows? It, but it, they were absolutely amazing. No, it was. Weird. You want me to try to find it? Yes, if, yeah, if you want to, because oh. yeah, because if he lit the background with lighting separate, you know what I'm saying? In, instead of just using no, the it was. It it didn't matter what the lighting was like, uh, Karen. It was, it was. Wait, wait until you see them because they are really, yeah, they're, they're awesome wow. pictures. Really it's it's once can... you look at and think, I wish I took that. <laughs> <laughs> or I wish I knew how to manipulate it like that. <laughs> Do you ever see yeah, it the corner? Sorry, Enika? Jealousy around the corner. 
Yes. <laughs> well, a little bit. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can find it now. Just, uh, no. no. i tell you what, just, just to finish off, should we, should we just do something? Any other questions on the sharpening while Laszlo's having a rummage? Yeah. Round. With this, I've forgotten what size this was now. It was image, image size, and it was, we left it at 20 inches with this one. So this was full size. Um, let's just go back to, not that, but this, that's the original. Let's go back to this one. What I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this as it is, and I'm just going to use Command D, Control D to, no, I'm not, let's click on it first of all, to fold it up out of the way. We're gonna to go to layer, we're gonna come down to flatten image so there it is into one layer command j control j we've talked about sharpening something a little bit different with image presentation is i've dropped this down into two layers i'm going to click on the background layer we're going to come up to image we're going to come down to canvas size with canvas size i'm going to make sure you tick relative and click in the center there so this is now going to apply it right the way around the image pixels no i'm going to change this to inches or if you want to use centimeters millimeters entirely up to you let's put in one inch here and one inch there i think that should be all right can't remember what size it was if i click okay yeah that will do nicely right the best way is if we click on the top i always like to have this call me old-fashioned but i want to move it a little bit further up if you press v on the keyboard you've now got the move tool you can now use the up arrow to nudge it up like this let's take it just to that area there but notice the way it's coming in underneath as well if i just switch that off you can see there's the two click on this layer we need to fill this with white so I'm going to, I'm just going to switch this off for a second to fill it with white. I can never remember if it is command or control, then backspace or delete. Let's try it. Yes, it is. Got it right first time. So we filled that with white. Next, what we can do is uh, you can add a drop shadow. There's a couple of different ways. If you come down to the FX icon, first of all, click on the layer. It always helps down to the effect icon, down to drop shadow and Bring your cursor over it's the move tool you move it around you can see it gives a nice bit of separation it was Laszlo talking about those pictures that made me think of it mm -hmm. and you can get a drop shadow that way my favorite method has got to be coming over the thumbnail pressing command or control get that square on the back click down we've now got a selection if I press and hold down command or control coming down to this icon here this is going to put in a new empty layer. Because I held down command or control, it put it underneath layer one. So layer two went underneath. If I switch this off, we're going to fill this with black, which is alt or option. Now command or control, so that's uh, option delete. It is alt backspace. That fills it with black. Command D, control D will turn it off. We can switch this on doesn't look much like a drop shadow but we can go to filter blur down to Gaussian blur and we can blur it perhaps not by quite so much but that area there would be pretty good so let's click OK the other way you can do it just thought of this is if you right click and you go to convert to smart object now if I come up to filter and if we go to Gaussian blur there command F control F there it is, no matter how much I sharpen it by now, I can always come back and I can change it should I want to. Got the move tool, so we can move it around. You can place it behind the image like that. And you may think that's a good way of producing your image. But the background here, if we just go into 100%, which we are now, if I move my way over, this is just solid white. So let's fold that up, click on the background layer, filter, noise we're going to come down to add noise i always think that sounds like a nasal disease doesn't it and you can see the effect that's having we've got uniform on a, on a monochromatic and i'm just going to drop that down a little bit more 
just take it up there it's just a little bit of texture i just want to take the blandness away from the the solid white if i just switch it off and on you can see the difference that makes yeah let's leave it there we're going to click on ok command zero control zero you can go out to fit on screen any questions so far i found no? the i found those pictures you found the pictures yeah yeah. Do you want me just quickly to finish off with this and we'll have a look at the pictures? Something I like to do with this as well, if you click on this layer, if we use Command T, Control T, right, it's saying that it's because it's a small filter, around it goes. If we right click, we can go to Warp. What I can now do is I can bring this in and out a touch like that. I can come to the bottom corner here, bring that down. We can just give a little bit of a, a bend to the picture. Right click in. Let's go back to scale. Let's bring it out a little bit on the side. A little bit on the side here. It looks solid. And there's a good reason for that is because it is, there it is, because it was a smart object, That's it neat. takes the, um, the Gaussian blur away from that. But once again, just dropping this down in opacity. So it's just got a little bit of a, like a curved edge to it. Command or control, let's select the two, and I'm going to use Command G, Control G to group them together. So now if I bring out my move tool, if I move this around, the drop shadow will move with it. Background a little bit bland, I've got a wooden plank. Let's lift this up over the image, pressing down Shift, reason for pressing shift is it goes directly over the top uh, wrong place to put it so let's drop it down below like this if i switch this off so we can see it once again command t control t and just bring it like that if you hold down alt or option just to bring it out i could always get it now do you find that with the using the transform tool, you've got to press shift to do it individually. Let's use command zero, control zero, just so we can see where we're at. Something like that there, double click into apply, switching this back on. And what we can do is just come back over to our group, command T, control T, and just swing that round a little bit. Perhaps just bring it down a touch or two in size. And there it is, just something a little bit, just a, a quick and easy way of being able to present your pictures a little bit differently. The colour, not too keen on, or should I say the tone. So let's go to photo filter. Just going to warm the wood up a little bit. Favourite one is this one here. Just take that up a touch or two like that. You can see the difference that makes to the image. And there it is. Any questions? Very, very impressive. Looks very good. Yes. Yeah, it's just it's just a, a quick and easy way that you can sort of just present your pictures a little bit different. But there's that's not what what I wanted to do. There's the the drop shadow, which is completely sort of on its own layer. If I just use Command T, Control T again, it's just saying because it's a there. You can see the way it turns off. If you right click, I can go to warp. What I wanted to do is just pull that out a little bit more like that. We need to have this side out further like this. Now when I double click and notice the way as well, the filter will come back on. There and there. And you can always adjust the opacity just to give it don't forget with this one, I can come down to, uh, let's go to stroke, which is there somewhere. With stroke, there it is, it's stroke outline. Make sure it's inside. You don't want to have it on the outside, otherwise you get that curved effect like this. So make sure it is inside. Drop it down in size like this. And if you ever use stroke borders, always make sure that the white is not as bright as the whiter part of your image. In other words, this has got quite a few whites in around here. You don't want the stroke border to be brighter than these because you want 
the image to show up. You want the clouds to show up. You don't want the, the first thing you see is the white of the stroke board so your eye goes straight to that. So just drop down the, yeah. the whiteness, if there's such a word, of the stroke border. And there it is. Brilliant. Great. Any questions at all? Thank you very much, David. If it's gonna be on the uh, on the we the video is recorded, so uh, David will and I will send you out the, the links to the videos. So uh, in case you miss something, you can just go back and play it slowly. Thank you, Michael. I, I, I did. I did do it a little bit quickly. I, I will put my hand up to that. <laughs> you you have a video on that, don't you, David? I do, and I've also done it with Affinity as well because yeah. it, it's a slightly different way of, of working. I just did one with Affinity on it, which has proved extremely popular. But yeah, it's it's just yeah, as I say, it, it's it's a slightly different way you can produce a picture. I think I've also done it with multiple images as well. Which again, it's it's just a nice way of, of you know, taking a picture but being able to present them in a, a a different way. It's very much for family and friends. I can't see a camera club judge actually sort of thinking, oh, that's a good way to do it. But <laughs> so, you know, it's always worth trying. And of course, the backgrounds you can use whatever backgrounds you want to use. Yeah, you know, and. If you sign up with the likes of Pixbay, uh, Pexels, or Unsplash, um, you can sign up with them. And if you just search for sort of brick walls, uh, wood, anything like that, there's there's loads out there which you can download free and use. Uh, David, may I ask you a question? Yes, Michael. I asked you last week. Uh, you couldn't reply because your microphone. Uh, Gave up. Have you done well, photo, have you done any photo restoration or photos? Not for years and years and years. When I first started doing digital imaging, as we called it then, it, it, basically all I did was photo restoration. But I haven't done any for you know, yeah countless years. Um, it's a great way of, with, with photo restoration, it's a great way of learning the art of sort of, particularly the clone stamp tool, the healing brush. You know, they're going to be your best friend as far as photo restoration is concerned. No, I've been, I've been doing quite a lot lately. I, um, when my mother died, I, I inherited actually, not hundreds, but thousands of old, old photographs. Go on. Mm. And I've been going through the pictures I've never seen of myself or my grandparents. Oh, wow. Right. But the old pictures, you know, they were printed on, on uh, like a textured paper. And yes. uh, it, it's very difficult to repair part of the picture and carry the texture over. You That's going to be the hardest part. The hardest part. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what I would also try doing is when we did the sharpening effect um in camera raw and you take you took it to, you took the color out so you just looked at it in black and white it's almost worth just trying to if, if you take a sample of the color the tone the average and then save that to one side but then convert the image to black and white when you're working on it and sometimes that's easier to work with and if you take the with the texture, if you can try and leave that as it is, by that I mean sort of, you know, I wouldn't try sharpening the, the image at the end of it, not with photo restoration. No, they're low resolution uh, images, no. both film yeah. and, and printed images. Yeah, no, you I want to... um, You've heard of the, the method of frequency retouching, often used in glamour. Where you can just yes. Change I was just wondering if that would help. Yeah, I don't know. It could, it could be worth a go. Yeah, uh, frequency separation, which um, uh, yeah, I did a, 
I did a video with that going back some while. I'll see if I can find the link for that one, Michael, and send it to you. But yeah, with frequency separation, it's just a great way of being able to, uh, as you said, it, I know it's used a lot with with glamour, where it just helps to to mask any uh, imperfections with the skin. Whether it would, it depends on the picture, because if if the picture is full of, because with, with old pictures you can have sort of bends tears you can have that sort of thing Picture or you can have, <laughs> yeah you can have bits pieces, or, or even you know with the likes of old slides for example you've got molds creeping in as well so there's, there's various different uh, bits and pieces but frequency separation that could be worth a try yes could you also maybe convert it to a painting like would that help hmm. i wouldn't i wouldn't convert an old picture to a painting. Okay. No, I think it, I think um, you need the authenticity of it. I restored a picture of my mother. This picture is probably seventy years old. I would never convert this to a painting. No. It was, no. It was no. a negative. Um, how, how, do you how do you reproduce the picture? Do you take a a picture with your camera? No, I, no. I I decided that I was going to restore some of these photographs, so I invested in a film scanner. Yeah. And, and what make of scanner is it, please? The camera, the, the scanner. The, the, the scanner. The scanner is an Epson. Yeah. V800 film scanner. But uh, the cameras, I've got, you know, these pictures my father and my grandfather took some of them are 80 90 years old pictures I've yeah seen. It's, it's best to try and keep them as close to the orig as the original as, as you can but yeah it's, it's uh, best to restore this is the yeah 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 did you say you had the pictures there laszlo yeah, yeah. Uh, well let, let me put them up you know for finish okay uh, these these are totally amazing Okay. Can you see it? Not yet. No. Okay, let's see. Stop share. Let's try it. Can. can you see it? No. No. David is still sharing. I'm, I saw that I'm stopping him, but he doesn't want to stop. Huh. Hang on. Now. <coughs> David is still hogging the screen. <laughs> okay. I've turned off. Yeah, let me just, let me just. No, huh? Oh, yes, I can see them, yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. Okay. At the top, it says it's green. You are viewing, you know, now I'm viewing Laszlo's screen. It's got view options. Right at the top of the screen in the middle. Oh, okay. Okay. Don't do anything. Uh, you and David share. Uh, I don't know why I cannot stop this. Uh, you have to you take have to away. There is an image of the doll. I saw it briefly. Now I'm looking at David's screen. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I click on stop sharing. Uh, That's there we it. Go. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, well, let me try it. <laughs> that was it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Am I seeing that now? There it is. Yeah. It? Yes. Okay, so that, the, these are the kind of images this guy makes. You know. And the sharpening is just so refined. Uh, you barely see it, you know, but it's, it's, it's actually adds texture to the image. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Look at, look at that. Look at the sharpening on this thing. Wow. It's got I, real... I can't figure it out to sharpen so fine. You know, just... Yeah. And the depth that it's got around when you got those concrete blocks, you can actually see the, uh, the one on the right hand side, which is the one I'm looking at. You can, you know, you can see the thickness of it. You can see down the side of it, the front face of it. And then as you go back into the building to that light and the, the vines creeping down, I think it's got, it, it's a sharpening that takes you into the image, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Wow. Over here. 
same thing here, you know, just, uh, yeah, it does, the, it does seem to have that 3D effect. Nice grungy effect too. Yeah. All these things. Oh, like that yeah. one. No? Pictures from, please. I mean, part of it is HDR, I can see that. Yes. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Well, but that I, is so, it's so subtle, but yeah. that, yeah, that looks... Uh, HDR. Yeah. Oh, oh, beautiful stuff. Do you, know, that's it. Do you know where they were taken? I'm sorry? Do you know where the images were taken? No. no. Uh, probably it says somewhere. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Shuffle the no. no, it doesn't say what it is. But this processing is just absolutely amazing. It brings out all the details. Um, I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> He's good. Yes. No question about that. And I bet anything that these lights, you know, they are fake. They are, those, those are definitely fake. Yeah, they, like, they look good, yeah. you know, I just. Well, See, that's to me has got real 3D quality. When you, when you look at the gramophone there, and yeah. then you look back and you go into that wardrobe, mm -hmm. and it, you know, the coats in the wardrobe, you can see the difference between the front of them and the back and the blue for the back. Mm -hmm. it, it has got that real sort of depth to it. Fine. You know, and it's, it's pin sharp from foreground right the way through, but yeah. It, Whatever the method is, it's uh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I got tons of these pictures, you know, the same kind of picture that he's taking, and that's how I found the guy. But I just cannot make the same processing. I can yeah. get close to it, but nothing, you know, nothing like it. But. Hmm. Um, yeah, it definitely looks like some sort of either 3D or HDR program that uh, he's been using. I've just, I'm, I'm looking at images that, uh, on Flickr from, from him. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I can send you the link to his page. Yeah, I can, I'm looking at them now, actually. Incredible, incredible images. Yeah. That's a, a yeah. good one, isn't it? Yeah. No, lovely stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we call it a day? Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Good to see everyone. Yeah, it is indeed. And uh, let's hope we can join again uh, next week. And I will send everyone again the uh, the link to those slideshows that we didn't enjoy all that much during that <laughs> camera talk. <laughs> right. That's very kind. Thank you. I, I must say, Ian, you, it looks like you've got something flickering and growing alongside you. It does. Uh, yes, it's my it's my green screen. It's it's mold, I think. As 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 you move, so it moves up and down. It's quite it's quite a good effect that. <laughs> it's, um, it's, <laughs> if you look behind this green screen, it's horrendous. <laughs> it's, it's, uh -huh. it's it's where I do all my it's my my tardies, what I call it. And it's got the um, um, so this is just a cloth, as opposed to a. You've got some computers which actually have. Um, the built-in green screen on on the actual yeah on on the computer if, if i if i drew the drop the blind down more i think that this would all disappear but i'm not going to it's lovely and look beautifully sunny outside it is absolutely gorgeous yeah, yeah. it's been an amazing day
Yeah, of course, okay. next time you will have to come up with another different kind of uh, background. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll keep burying them, don't worry. <laughs> just, just, just a bit of, give a bit of a variety. <laughs> yep. All right. Good. Righty ho. Well, thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah. That's right. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.